Hey guys, uh, sorry, I just needed to flick over onto my internet so I didn't keep cutting out. Shiloh, in the gate now. In the gate now. Five, four, three, two, one. If I get you out of that gate, darling, you'll be going upstairs. Do you understand? You don't go out this gate. Um, one of the challenges that I've got is they don't ch shut this fucking gate. And it's not fit for kids. So anyway, uh, David's just come on. So because David's here, I'll stick to the point on a couple of things. Um, yesterday, I was contacted by Kumbai uh, Wales ITV, who have been doing research on forced adoption. She's a lovely, 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 lovely woman. Um, but she needs uh, somebody who speaks Welsh. Now, they're willing to do Welsh. She's going to the producer to see whether or not they can cover my story with me with a translator. But because it's a Welsh speaking program, BBC program, they need as much. But what I was going to say to people is if you absolutely chock a block this up, so if you are a Welsh case, Shiloh, doody 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 dude. So if you are a Welsh speaking case or you are a Wales case, then. Um, she's asked me not to put her details over, um, but what if you PM me with, with your details or your Facebook and then I will send it over. And I've said give me until Monday because as it stands now, until they can find a Welsh speaking case, it's been held and they're not going to be able to run with this programme. It's very, 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 very important that the ITV run with this. It's going to be forced adoption exposed and we need these cases. Um, it's a very pinnacle time in everything that's going on. Um, as I was saying on the previous live a minute ago this rabbit hole is much bigger than we could have ever well we I th we knew we knew we we knew how far this went it was it was the level that they're going to go to to try to cover this up i don't believe that steven spielberg is involved i believe that still steve steel yes it is yeah i believe that um steven spielberg was potentially protecting the kids but I can't hand on heart say because I don't know Steven Spielberg personally. Um, do I believe that Dustin Hoffman is involved? I don't know. I'm a little bit shell shocked because with the arrest of um, that's my in the kitchen. Yeah, that's your brother up there, isn't it? It's Broski. Um, you're gonna go and play with your cars. Should we go and see where your cars are? Shiley, you're gonna come over and play with the cars. Look at that fucking garish, horrible building that I live in. Um, so different from a nice bloody detached house um but yeah the, the the recent arrest with with stuff that's going on and as you know 2014 the russian president also said some stuff and 2000 and um 2017 he came out really big on on saying that um, Great Britain, Australia, uh, America and Australia were pretty much being ran <laughs> and he called it a satanic uh, paedophile ring and look, if the president of, of Russia is going to come out with it then, you know, I, I think we all have to sort of say he's not going to be lying, mate um, and as I said on the previous live is, and I've said before Donald Trump is going to be really pushing in January so he's already got the investigators out there, he's already got everything done, and he's given until January to get to this and, and coming out in January. The challenge that we've got is they're not willing, even Donald Trump at this particular point, is not willing to believe that the social care system is involved in this. Now, ops or, I don't know whether or not it was genuinely people's credit cards being slashed and child porn being knocked down and could these people be innocent or is it what I've been saying the whole time and that we have a genuine care service and multi-agency and then we have offshore what would be classed as vigilant people who are running within their own authority and power. As you know, there was a video done recently and the mother walked out of the police station because the orders were not stamped and signed. And a lot of us have had our children taken with no orders stamped and signed and there has to be something done about this. Um, one of the problems that we've got right now, where I feel that I can come in better on this, is that we the parents are very vulnerable. A lot of us don't know the laws, a lot of us don't know the process that we're in, a lot of us don't understand what to do if a social worker knocks on your door. I'm dealing with a lot of people here 
who have under the mental health and they don't have social in their lives because they're working with the mental health. I need to find a baby on the buggy. But what that means is they're just stuck in this system. There is no, the, the mental health system is overloaded. We just all need to have someone to talk to, to offload. So I feel it's really, really, really important for people to tell their stories and get it out of their emotions. One of the greatest therapies is something that I've sort of worked with on and been part of creating. It's timeline therapy. Now, you can do this on your own social media. You can do this by literally going through your own timeline on your social media and putting in significant events. Or if you go over onto um, forced adoption, sorry, faces of forced adoption, uh, .co uk and it's uh, a website for all the families that have had children taken for forced adoption. I don't have any controls with the website, I'm not behind the website, um, it's, it's faces of forced adoption. But it's not about who is behind any of it, it's not about me, it's not about David Jenkins, it's not about Katie who's leading on the 17th, it's not about so and so, Sam who runs uh, whatever, it's not about all of these independent groups. What I've seen in the time that I've been in this, and I, as you know, it was literally, probably around this time now, uh, I was laying in a bed in Save the Family, in my room, where I was facing eviction after my children were taken, and I was beaten. I was beaten, I was lost. I had all my bundles at the bottom of the bed. I'd had my draconian gagging order issued on me. I'd gone to court and been regagged. Um, because I had previous media, they came after me even harder. They blocked the media. Um, they had my car hire taken off of me. I had non molestation orders placed on me and injunctions to going into Wales and literally to be kicked out of Wales. As you know, I was involved with Family Army at the time. Uh, they were living in Prestatin around the corner and uh, they come and kidnapped me from Save the Family with a bunch of masks and took me to Prestatin where I wasn't allowed. Um, just watching Shiloh. And I didn't know what to do. And this event came up and it was called Scott, Stolen Children of the UK. And it had something like four, five, six thousand people who were said they were gonna be attending this event. And I just thought, I'm laying here in Wales. They've taken my kids, they're evicting me. They've taken benefits off me. They've stopped me from working. They've taken my car off of me. I don't know what else to do. And I literally, there was a woman called Kelly on site and I was screaming, crying. My son was with me. He didn't know what to do. Um, <clears throat> I didn't know what to do. <coughs> and um, as you know, I'd known Jason Fairfield for five years previously through social media marketing and through the coaching world. And um, just watching Shiloh. And uh, Jason messaged me and said, "Come on, girl, you can do this. You know, get yourself up, get up, go." So I said, "Look, there's this event in London. I don't have the money to go. I don't know how I'm going to pull this off. I don't know what I'm getting involved in. I don't know who's there. But I believe that I would maybe meet somebody who would be able to tell me something, because I was in a situation where." I'd only just had the care and placement orders done. Nothing else had been done. I'd just literally ramrod the first 26 weeks. There were so many options available to me at that time. There were so many things that I could have done to have saved my kids at that time. Um, and I just got pulled into something that took me away. But would have I ever got my kids back from that situation? No, I wouldn't have done. Um, the reality is, to all you people out there who think, you know, don't realise how fucking lucky you are, it's because of people like David and Sam and, um, you know, other people and myself uh, that you, you, you're keeping your kids. It's, it's because of people like us that the pressure is on, that people are now going through the system and they're pushing now to actually not take your kids. It's because of people like us and we work fucking hard. David works fucking hard. I've been to David's, I've been at David's, that man probably still, I can probably tell you now, he might have some milk in his fridge, he's investing everything into this website, he is putting everything into this website. The reason that I need you to sign on to it, is David has stuff that I don't have, and he's managed to put all of the work and everything into making sure that all the database and everything can be held on the website. 
there is also an app that's been built in it for you to write your book to write your story so literally you sign in there is going to be membership on this guys there has to be and the reason that there has to be is because um we need to keep reinvesting in this to get bigger stronger harder and faster um I'm a hypocrite, I haven't been into my own site yet. I haven't had chance or time. Um, I've decided today to be out on the streets again for the summer, and then I'm going to be writing my book in the winter. And I hopefully bring my book out for the 13th of December, which is the day that my children are taken. I live in a fucking prison, I really do. I live in a fucking prison. It's like a FEMA camp here, it really is. I have police officers, council workers and everything, and residents all in one place. I, I feel like I'm in a mental health unit. Um, so anyway, I'm making a bit of an effort with my community here. It's a bit difficult, it's a bit challenging, but the reason that I am is because yesterday I spoke with my MP. Now, my MP won't deal with me in relation to the other stuff. However, my MP has no choice now but to deal with me. I also yesterday managed to speak to the head council. And what I've basically said is, you have parents vulnerable to social services because of your failure. And so they know who I am and what I'm about and what I stand for based on the fact that I've been communicating in a very different way. And then lo and behold, after having 14 parents and families sat out here, um, and a lot of the council going, oh shit, actually she's now just changed her direction. So it's time to step Portsmouth up. And here is where a lot of the trafficking is done because we have the ferries, the airports, um, same as Liverpool, same as um, uh, the Docklands, um, Look, it's just council, 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 council. Fucking FEMA camp, it really is. It's a fucking prison. It's a glorified prison. Would you like to see Johnny Five from the outside? That fucking stupid camera. Um, so, yeah, so then the ITV. So back to ITV. There's quite a few reporters and journalists that are on our side right now that are trying to bring this out. The message is to halt the adoption drive. The message is to halt the current proceedings that are going on within the family court structures I'm and also to, there, yeah, to also fund for family support. They're starting to recognise now that it's not about all these individual diagnoses such as borderline personality, narcissistic traits, blah, 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 blah. It's about trauma. It's about whether or not you've gone through one significant big traumatic experience that's traumatised you or whether you've had lots of little traumas that have happened that that have gone on and escalated and you've never really got out of this situation and that's sort of what I'm dealing with it causes me trauma every time there's a removal it causes me trauma every time someone comes forward that you know towards it speaks but it also empowers me now the problem that I've got with Lisa is Lisa is lying I did a live the other day where I talked about post-traumatic stress and talking about knives uh, where are we going you going over to the park all right, I'll bring your tubs in a minute and then I'll get your bag. The boys want to go over to the park, so. Go on then. I'll get your cars in a minute. Um, so basically, if we want ITV and the BBC and all of these people to talk about it, we've got to bring it together. We've got to bring it together under more normal, very individual failures because at this particular point, we need to leave the people who are dealing with a lot of this other stuff to them. Because it's, unless we are in a situation to actually gear up... Is it graduation today? Oh, wow. Oh, I might go into Portsmouth today. It looks like it's graduation today. That'd be interesting. Oh, yeah, that's a place for me to go today. Graduation. The mayor and everybody will be there. Um, so... Um, yeah, basically, what I feel people should do and how this will benefit all of you is, because it's July, is do your own video. Put your own live up, do your own video, talk about your own story and put it out. Because if you've only got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven of us that are actually putting our heads above the parapet and everybody else is still down, it's not going to work. And it, it really is the time now. It really, really is the time, guys. We're, let me just explain something. 
the MPs all leave on the 25th of, of July, right? So literally from the 25th of July, we have no parliamentary in place, okay? It's done, it's gone, school year is over. They don't come back until the 3rd of September. So basically, recess is over, and the 3rd of September, school comes back, and we have a new school council. And if you think of it like that, if you think of it as, when you know when you go to school, and you go into a school year, so you go into the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. Each parliamentary seat only lasts four years. So basically every four years, we end up with a new parliamentary system. Now, as you know, I'm involved in something bigger. So I'm not just involved in forced adoption. Step Up Britain covers everything. Step Up Britain is everything, mate. Um, I designed this from grassroots up all the way through. Um, so I'm dealing with stuff on all levels and one of my things is to abolish parties. I disagree with parties. Parties alienate people, parties se separate people and what I'm aiming to push, so this is separate from parents that are fighting for their, their children, but you're, you're, you're so important in all of this. We are so important in all of this because it's us that are, are getting the tail end of, and the raw deal of absolutely everything. Um, I've got a boxing coach today because my anger issues are starting to get a bit too much. I can control them, but I do worry at the moment that if, say, Lisa Bartle, I felt like going to strangle the fucking woman the other day. In fact, I felt like driving all the way to fucking, I'll tell it on live, I don't give a shit. I felt, I felt. There's a difference between I feel and I'm going to do, okay? So Mr. Police Officer, who keeps having these videos, go on, carry on, keep sending them to the police, mate. Keep sending them, I tell the police the same. You step to my door, you threaten me in any way, shape or form, I am legally allowed to defend myself to any level. My physical body does not allow me to defend myself in certain actions, so all I have is my mouth. So, if I have to become somebody who steps up and tools up to defend herself, so fucking be it. I'm quite all right with this. I'm an ex-army wife. I'm quite happy to have guns around me. If I was a police officer, I would be allowed to do the same thing. If I worked in the mental health, I would be able to have spray and a mace. So I am just a woman on her own. Look, I have absolutely nothing. The only thing I have is my headphones for my music and this gob. They always said to me as a kid, she can talk for Britain. They've said to me all the way through, all through uni, that woman can talk for Britain. Oh, I've had it. Teachers. She can talk for Britain. So it's about time I now step up and talk for fucking Britain. I have managed to interview everybody. I say interview. I've managed to just listen, talk to people, listen, go and speak to the most angriest people and just let them offload. Now, David will know because David was there this day when we went to um, one of the families and I was talking about somebody who was a chef, right? And we stepped in this house, my kids weren't there, I didn't have my kids, so I was on my own. There was no children in the house, so it was different. And literally, he's a chef, and he was stood at the door, and he's obviously had his kid taken, and he had a knife in his hand, and he was fuming, he was angry. Now, not a lot of people can deal with anger, because people don't know what's gonna happen. Hence why we live in a world right now, where everybody puts notes on the door to say, um, you know, if you express anger, you will be removed, you will call the police. But we as a society have had enough. We, we, yeah, but you haven't got, you're on a big swing now, remember? And I haven't got two hands, and if I have to drop my phone again, hence why my phone's broke, because I keep having to drop it to rescue my kids. That's high enough for you right now. You ready? Yay! Yay, say hello to everybody. Hello! So hold on with both hands. Say hello, Crackbook. Hello. Hold on with two hands. Are you say hello to everybody? Are you saying though? Mr. Eating the top of his bottle, so I'm gonna have to buy more bottles with no money. Um, so anyway, I'm not paid until the 18th. Uh, there's lots going on. I spoke to D Dean today about going on camp and he's worried about acid. He's worried about somebody putting acid on the kids. I'm not talking about acid as in uh, doodah, I'm talking about acid as in LSD. So I'm not going to take the kids into any place where if I take my eyes off them, I have to worry about stupid people that want to set me and my kids up. Um, and also, one of the reasons that I'm thinking of not going to Trinidad is because at the moment it's fucking exploding on all of the Caribbean islands. 
So these very, very, very rich people, what they've been doing is they've been harvesting these children. Um, and I'm not just talking about, uh, you know, English white children. I'm talking about all forms of children. However, the majority of them want British English children. And what they basically do is they... Hello there, princess. Wow, what have you got? Oh, wow, that is absolutely amazing. What's this horse called? Has he got a name? No. No, we're going to have to come up with a name before we go to the park later, won't you we? You have to pick a name. I'm going to pick a name. Okay, we have, let me show you because I don't want to show her on camera. We have a horse. Okay, I'm the Trojan horse. So we're going to have a white horse. What's the horse's name? We need to name the white horse. My little princess has turned up. There we go, sweetheart. Um, so anyway, the kids are all coming into the park because I'm out now. So all the parents think, oh, Kelly's out now. We can come out. So literally in about a minute, I'll probably have about 20, 30 parents with their kids down here putting the world to rights. Um, so anyway, where was I? Um, yeah, basically what they've been doing is these are people who have their own jets. So you're talking about the level of money that people have, um, you know, big jets, big, um, big things. They have their own flight paths and blah, 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 blah. So what the investigators in this have been able to do, and this is why we have to keep the pressure on, because as we know, investigations like this tend to disappear. Um, and we need to, as David has said, keep shining the light, keep shining the light. The only way you get rid of the dark is to keep shining the light. Shine the light, shine the light, shine the light. Um, in fact, actually, LZ7, who I was involved in back in 2007, we took a song all the way to number seven in the charts. Do you want me to push you, sweetheart? Called um, This Little Light of Mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Basically, so we've got to shine the light we've got. Now, the challenge that we've got, say little people like me, is the police can enter my property and I don't have any exits. I have no way of getting out, I have no way of protecting my children. And the Dean has basically said, you lose these chilled children, darling. Yes, you will be dealing with me and I will chop you up, cut you up and fucking bury your pieces around a fucking world where all your social media is. So, and I agree with him. If he jeopardised the children, I will destroy him too. So, um, none of us want to put either of our children in any harm. risk. you right there, dude? Um, and I certainly don't want to be risking my children. So, over in the Caribbean, these people from the States and the UK, David has always said that he's never ever gonna link the America and the UK together. Now we have to. Now we have to bring all of those networks together, the American, even the Eastern worlds. Um, and in fact, child trafficking is going on massively in India and places like that. Uh, here come my friends. Seriously, I've got council workers around me and I've got police driving past as well. Um, where I am right now, I am literally got multi-agency around me massively. Um, the police station is now empty. So you know that police station that I've been shooting at, if you ever see me? Me. Yes, he is, darling, but I don't think he wants to go back to the garden. Are we going to go to the garden? Okay. Yeah, we're going to go back to the garden. Okay, well, if you go back, your mum's in the garden, isn't she? Okay, well, I'll get Shiloh and I'll be with you, yeah? Okay. Um, right, are you coming back to the garden? Am I going to get you out of the swing? Yes? Okay. Um... Yeah, so basically what I'm saying is, is I'm out of my depth, mate. I am well out of my league. Um, I'm not the sort of person who is living in some big fucking house where I've got guards around my house and Rottweilers, and if anyone stepped to me, I've got a big gangster husband who shoot them. Well, actually, I do have a gangster partner who would shoot them, but um, we're not in that situation to be whatever. But um, the challenge now is... As this evidence gets gathered, there's people out there who can pay a lot of money to off people, just like Jill Dando was, just like many of the other people have, um, and just like um, another one of my mums is coming around the corner now who had her kids taken off, uh, she had five taken off the uh, lovely lady. 
absolutely lovely. You see how lovely she is as she walks past me in a minute. Um, guys, come here this way. Shiloh, come on. Shiloh, come on, dude. Two seconds. Dude, come on. Come on, because Elijah's in the garden. Hello there, lovely. How are you doing? I'm good, getting there. Not killed anybody yet? No, not everybody. Yet. No, I'm still going, still yeah, going, still going. Back. Keep on keeping on. Next time I see you walking down the street with your kids. Joe, you keep going, girl. It will happen. Keep going. Um, and it is, I'll tell you what's been really lovely today as well. I've, had, I've got one of the mums coming over to see me with her kids next week. Um, and it's really lovely to see that you know, if we hadn't have got involved in these cases that, you know, these parents would be like me and David and many other of us that at the particular moment our children are adopted. At the moment we're holding ground on a lot of people where their children are still in long-term foster care, but we've been able to block adoptions. Um, in fact, since 2013, we've blocked many adoptions. There's many, 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 many people who children, okay, they are trapped in long-term foster care right now, but they didn't get adopted. They might be in special guardianship, but they haven't been adopted. You're in a better situation than us. And I promise you, you can bring your kids back. It really is fucking piss easy to bring your kids up. You just need to overturn the system that's working against you and make it work for you. Um, and you have to take control of it. You have to show that you're not incompetent. You have to show that you don't need these people to suck eggs for you. And you don't... Oh, they're coming back now. Okay. Well, it's lucky I didn't come over to the garden then if you're coming back. Okay, it's just a case of grabbing cars, is it then? All right, it looks like I'm stuck between here and the garden today and I can't even make a bloody coffee or lunch. Um, and Liam's fuming today as well because he's not been paid on his payday. Or cut buddy, that's his stuff. Um, where's Shiloh gone? Oh, he's down there. Down where? Okay, so literally over the next hour, I will have everybody's children. <laughs> It's lovely, I love it. It's taken me a long time to be around other people's kids, to be honest. Um, like, right now, I've got a, a very pretty little girl with long blonde hair coming in. Hello! <laughs> It'll shout me, Kelly, Kelly! Um, and when I first got here, it was too traumatising for me because I kept seeing flicks of blonde hair and all the girls all come around me and stuff, so... Um, you know, I used to find it quite sad because obviously no disrespect to the children. I don't want other people's children, I want mine. Um, you know, I want to be in the park now with all of my children. Um, obviously Liam and Daniel have got a different life and that's cool and they've grown up. Um, but that breaks my heart that I didn't get to do all the, the normal things. I didn't get to, you know, have my kids leave our family home in the way that they should have done and, and go off into their new lives and stuff. And, and that's really traumatising. I even miss Daniel's ball and, you know, things like that. So, um, but anyway, the time's now, guys. And the reason that time is now is because in government structures, they're forming a whole new assembly. And these people here, they don't give a shit what par parliament are doing or government are doing or, you know, things like that. Yeah, the fucking live world, it's funny. Everybody on fucking live and chatting. Um, but it means we can connect and connect. The fact is, there's people here and we're connecting and we're connecting and we're connecting and connecting. So on the 17th, guys, keep going for the 17th. We're going to be standing under the banner, Families Destroyed by the State. So, uh, Katie, so as you remember, Katie came down to London. I did my normal. I had an absolute breakdown over Katie's story. And then boom, 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 Katie took the stand, picked up the mic, and she has not bloody stopped. That girl is fighting fire with fire. That girl is fucking storming through. Um, so please, 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 if you can get to uh, the, the, the demo with them, please do so. But if you can, one by one, on the 17th, all destroyed, just all stand with us with a banner. We, I've just destroyed by the state. We've not been destroyed, which is why I don't like that. They won't destroy us, guys. We will rise. We will rise. We will get stronger from all of this. We will come out of this bigger, stronger, harder and faster. We will come out of this, the people that we were meant to be, doing what it is that we were meant to be. The, 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 the decision that you make to join this and what 
what banner you choose to pick up, what what um, service out of this that you choose to step into will be who you should have been in the first place. Now, what I'm aiming to do, I've got a projector, right? And the army is letting me have all of their um, old slides. Now, I'm hoping through this that I'm going to find some child pornography. That's a horrible say to say, I'm hoping. But I'm hoping that all these old slides, so I'm going to be pulling in all the old projector slides, which was the original way that we used to do photographs. And I'm asking everybody to just send them to me if, if you've got them on a car boot, if you've got them. I want to go through these and see what's on them. I'm also looking for lovely pictures of, of Britain before it was, before it become this. Um, and I'm also looking now to rig up. So basically I want to rig, I want an MC, I want a mic, and I'm going to run for parliament. In fact, I'm not just going to go and run for parliament. I'm going to literally try to get all the way around the UK and get as many of you to be who you should be. So what I've had done today, I shouted out my window today to a guy who was wearing a UK boxing coach top and he's ended up coming over to my window and we've had a conversation and um, he goes to the circuit box and he trains over there and I said to him, have you ever actually taken one on one? He said, well, no one's ever asked me to, but I'd love to. Um, I said, well, absolutely brilliant. So we've, I've said, look, I'm broke. So if I do your business management and you train me, um, will you be willing to do this? He said, absolutely bloody fantastic. He said, I've thought about doing it for a long time, but I've not got to that level. So literally this weekend, we're going to go and meet up. Um, I've said to him I'm going to do it live as well because I want to do this to show people how you can overcome combat trauma and it is combat trauma it's a war it's a war on your mind and for September particularly October I need to be positioned in Parliament as a consultant um, and not just as a consultant, I want to be push, pushing it. So Step Up Britain and Unity in the community is running all the way through and literally helping every single person, you know, where do you want to live, what sort of lifestyle do you want and getting you more and more ready. So the day that your kids turn up, you're living where you want to be. You have the lifestyle that you want to be. You have the material wealth that you need to have. You have the money that you need to have. Um, and not only that, um, Oh, well, sorry, I was just eyeing my kids up there. Um, and not only that, even if you, you know, you're in a situation to, to, to pull good legal teams around you. I, I shocked the, the mums outside earlier yesterday because um, we were all there. I went, Joe, fuck this. And I got the MP on the phone. And they were like, uh, and then literally as it come, uh, Green and Clean came past to manage all of this. I managed to fight, get the manager. And they were like, right, she really gets shit done, doesn't she? And it's like, I don't have time to waste messing around tickling people. I don't have time for people like Lisa to be causing me shit. And I have to ask myself questions.